Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Caravan TV. Welcome to Practical Caravan TV and the rather lovely surroundings of Chertsey Camping and Caravanning Club site. Now the caravan's pitched, the steadies are down, we just need to plug in and we're ready to go. This week we've got something of a luxury special for you with the Swift Conqueror 560 but first the mighty Buccaneer Clipper. This is the Buccaneer Clipper and it's something of a trailblazer. It weighs nearly two tonnes, costs nearly 31 grand, and it's eight feet wide. Unusually, it sits on a BPW Swing VTEC chassis, rather than the more common Alco, and it features automatic hydraulic self-leveling. So far, pretty special, but nothing revolutionary. Well, to see that, we have to climb aboard. And how about this? It's a fixed twin bed van, but not as we know them. Instead of having the beds along the side walls, so you feel a bit crushed up against the wall, they're turned through 90 degrees to go across the van. Which is something you can only do, of course, when you've got an eight foot wide caravan. At the moment, they're retracted in day mode when they act as sort of chaise long for reading your book. But at night time, you simply grab the end, pull it out, pull out the mattress, and then flip over the top. And you've got a bed that measures well over six feet long. Each bed has its own really luxurious padded headboard, their own reading light, their own locker above. And of course, between the two, there's a rather nice little unit to put your glasses, your mug of tea, and all your knickknacks at night. The feel of a hotel twin room is reinforced by the washroom, which features a rather neat bowl sink, a superb shower unit with a slate effect lining, and an Eco Camel Orbit shower head. Not to mention a domestic towel rail and a large vanity unit with a useful cupboard beneath. Now just about the only thing in this caravan that isn't super sized is this wardrobe where you'll also find the header tank for the Aldi wet central heating system. But step back into this kitchen area and it is simply vast. There's masses of space for people to get past each other without bumping. And on this side you've got a huge fridge freezer and a microwave really sensibly sited at a level that means you won't burn yourself every time you take something out of it. Over on the offside, there's everything you would expect. A separate oven and grill, a dual fuel hob with three gas burners, one electric, a massive granite effect sink, and plenty of storage space, not to mention a couple of sockets. One of my particular favorites is this island unit, which neatly separates the lounge from the kitchen area. It's got shelves beneath, but it isn't particularly deep. And that's because behind it, there's an external storage locker, which you access from the other side of the kitchen. This tall cupboard is the storage for the table, for the lounge, and there's also a set of good sized drawers. Perfect place to store all your crockery and your cutlery. Moving back into the lounge area, it seems sort of perverse to leave it till last when it's such a special space. There's some really neat detailing here. I love these rotating catches on the cupboards. Now I could sit here and tell you all about the specification of this van, but it's probably simpler just to say if it's an item that's commonly fitted to a tourer, chances are it's fitted to this one. Everything from an onboard fresh water tank to a rather glitzy backlit cocktail cabinet and of course the obligatory panoramic sunroof. But quite apart from the kit, it's the way this van feels that makes it very special. I love the details, things like these very domestic style curtains or the sofas that wrap around and have backrests that do the same so that when the bed is made up using the pull-out slats it all fits together perfectly. Now, £31,000 is an awful lot of money to pay for a caravan, but then the Buccaneer really is a very special caravan. As to whether or not you should go for a clipper, well, that depends entirely on whether you can get your head around the fixed twin transverse layout. If it works for you, one thing's for sure, there is nothing else quite like it. The new Tucson is Hyundai's replacement for the iX35 to take on the likes of the Nissan Qashqai and the Mazda CX-5. We're testing the range-topping 
diesel 4x4 in premium SE spec, can it justify a price tag of well over £30,000? That puts the Tucson close on price to bigger but less well-equipped SUVs. But despite the Tucson's school-run friendly dimensions, it's quite a heavy car. Our 4x4 automatic with the most powerful diesel engine weighs 1,779 kilos. We match the Tucson to a Swift Expression 626 with a mass in running order of 1,413 kilos. With so much pulling power, the Hyundai was unfazed by pulling such a big twin axle tourer. In fact, it needed just 12 and a half seconds to accelerate from 30 to 60 miles per hour, as you might when joining the motorway. The six-speed automatic gearbox works well with the powerful engine and makes it easy to get the most from the engine's 295 pounds-feet of torque. The Tucson is stable as well as quick. At the legal limit, the Hyundai feels composed and firmly in control of the caravan behind it. We'd have liked more feedback through the steering when pushing the Tucson hard in our lane change test, but we couldn't feel any shudder from the caravan. Although it's not the lightest tow car, we've been impressed with the Tucson's economy while towing. On a mixed route of A-roads and motorways, it achieved 27.3 mpg. We're also very happy with the Hyundai's brakes, which stopped car and caravan from 30 miles per hour in 9.5 metres. That's one of the shortest stopping distances we've recorded. Inside, the Tucson is a big improvement over the iX35 it replaces. It's more smartly finished for one thing, with a modern and attractive design and a touchscreen that's easier to use than most. Those in the front have plenty of space, although the panoramic sunroof fitted to premium SE cars does eat into headroom slightly. Rear seat space is reasonable, but adults would have more room to stretch out in a Honda CRV. The boot is a useful size, although as with rear seat space, some rivals are more generous. There's a full-size spare wheel under the floor though, something we're always pleased to see, rather than a space saver or a repair kit. Is this car worth over £32,000? Well, for our money there's better value to be had lower down the Tucson range, but this top spec version is a quick, powerful and stable all-weather tow car. Now, Swift's Smart HT construction has been around for a while now, but ever since it was launched in the top spec elegance range, there have been a couple of complaints. Firstly, it's pretty expensive, and secondly, it's really quite heavy. So with the relaunch of the Conqueror for 2016, Swift took the decision to pop it into the Smart HT body shell, with two great benefits. It's cheaper, and it's a little bit lighter. At the same time, Swift brought out a couple of new layouts for the Conqueror, and one of them is this, the 560. It uses a layout that we first saw in the Laser 652 by Coachman, which was launched last year at the February show. It features a washroom right in the middle here and a lovely rear master bedroom. I've started on this side because look at all those windows. You can tell it's going to be bright and sunny inside this van. The services here are on the off side and up front you've got that traditional great automotive styling that Swift has become known for, along with a lovely big gas locker. Around the back here, you'll find mounting points for a two-lay bike rack, which Swift is fitting across all of its models this year, and heavy-duty steadies, which it's worth pointing out are really easy to access, something you can't say about all tourers. They're part of a generous equipment level, which also includes a gas barbecue point, an external 230 volt socket, these rather natty alloy wheels, and a receiver for an Alco secure wheel lock, although you'll have to buy the lock itself as an option or upgrade to an Elegance if you want it as standard equipment. The generous kit levels continue inside too. In here we've got Aldi wet central heating, a lovely big panoramic sunroof overhead, and a neat little pod on the front shelf here that's packed with sockets including two 230 volt points. In fact, the only thing I couldn't find in here was a USB port, which the Elegance has in that same pod. It's a really spacious lounge as well. It's perhaps going to be tight if you want more than four to sit around in here, but for a couple and a couple of their friends, it's plenty roomy enough. These sofas probably aren't really usable as single berths unless you're very, very short, but they do make up a good-sized double bed for those occasional guests. 
Now at the risk of sounding a little bit obsessed, there are two sockets in here as well, but if you spend a lot of time on a pitch, even a seasonal, you will really appreciate that. The kitchen area is pretty good, it's spacious, I really like the fact there are good sized big drawers for keeping all your crockery in. There's a microwave which is sensibly sited, not ridiculously high, and not directly over the hob which is great news. I really love this graphite black Phoenix worktop, it looks really great and I'm told you can sand it back if you scratch it. And if you need more space there's a huge worktop flap at the other end. There's the obligatory dual fuel hob with a separate oven and grill and there are some thoughtful storage solutions such as underneath that oven and on the near side both above and below the slimline tower refrigerator which of course is de rigueur in a top spec van now. But for many the real reason for buying this caravan is just behind this door. It's not hard to see why this central washroom idea has become so popular. It really does feel surprisingly spacious in here even though this is on a single axle van. It's also helped by having a lovely bright skylight overhead and a frosted window so there's plenty of natural light getting in. There's loads of space around the loo which is something you can't say about a lot of end washrooms and ahead of me there's a big vanity unit with a huge mirror which adds to that sense of space. There's a separate shower cubicle which does have a small amount of wheel arch intrusion but not enough to make it awkward and it's all topped off by an Aldi radiator keeping it toasty warm. But best of all there's not one entrance but two into this room so it doesn't matter which side of the bed you'll be able to come in here in the night if you need to without disturbing your partner. Now there's one aspect of this master bedroom that could be a bit of a deal breaker. This island bed is only six feet long from end to end. That said, that's not uncommon when we've got this layout. And if it's long enough for you, there's an awful lot to like about this bedroom. There are windows on either side, so it's nice and light. There are radiators on each side, so it's really warm. We've got reading lights, a useful shelf for a cup of tea or a book. And ahead of me, on the facing wall, there's a TV mount and all the aerial points you need, plus a useful shelf. There are his and hers wardrobes. That one's got the Aldi header tank in it and this one's got the table for the lounge. That might seem a little bit of a pain but actually the table is surprisingly light so lugging it from the back of the van to the front isn't a huge problem. There's sets of drawers beneath and underneath me plenty of storage along with the spare wheel. Well it looks great inside and out, it's spacious and it's got plenty of kit. So where's the catch? Well at the beginning we told you that it was lighter and cheaper than an elegance and both of those remain true. That doesn't make it particularly light or particularly cheap however. That said if you've got the £25,000 plus to buy one chances are you've probably got a tow car that's big enough to cope with an empty PLM of more than 1600 kilos. Oh and if you were thinking of upgrading to an elegance well you can't because for now the 560 is only available in the Conqueror and if you pick it I wouldn't argue with you because it's a very lovely thing. So think coachman and what do you think of? Well probably tradition, quality, perhaps heavy weight, perhaps quite a high price tag, but perhaps it's time to debunk a few of those myths. Take the Vision 380 behind me, it looks really modern, it weighs less than 1200 kilos would you believe, it costs less than 16,000 pounds. A big part of that weight loss has come from Coachman's new advanced bonded construction method which has shed 25 kilos this year. It's a really good looking van and although it's Coachman's entry level model, literally it's entry level model, this is the smallest vision in the lowest range, it still doesn't feel like a budget caravan. We've got an AKS hitch stabiliser here at the front and we've got alloy wheels and shock absorbers so it should tow really well. And of course it's a well thought out machine. All the services are on the offside, so there's nothing that's going to clutter the inevitable awning. But let's get a feel for it by stepping aboard. Isn't it funny how fashions change? There was a time when this end kitchen side washroom layout was completely de rigueur. But these days people tend to prefer an end washroom. But come into this diminutive coachman and you do wonder why. It works brilliantly. This van measures just over five and a half metres from hitch head to tail yet it feels genuinely spacious in here and every bit of space has been used. Take this little tall cupboard here where you'll find the table. Above the fridge there's a little drawer for your cutlery. Up here 
a very neatly concealed microwave. And shelving here, shelving here, big cupboards here, and let's talk about quality again. Look at the finishing in there. There's no raw wall behind. There's actually a rather nice continuation of the splashback. This really doesn't feel like an entry-level caravan. We've got a proper oven and grill, a dual fuel hob with these little retainers to avoid you burning your hands when you're washing up, which is a nice depth of thought. And under this cover, we've got the sink, which is a good size. There's plenty of storage in this kitchen as well. We've got a drawer and a wardrobe beneath. And talking of wardrobes, over here is the main one for the caravan. And believe me, it is genuinely massive. As for here, this is the door to the washroom. You're never going to get a huge washroom in this layout, but the Vision 380's wet room is certainly a usable size. There's a Thetford electric flush toilet in the rear offside corner, and the wash basin and moulded vanity unit should be waterproof if they get splashed by the shower, although there is a wraparound curtain. There's plenty of storage in little cubby holes and cupboards, and there's a pop-up roof light providing ventilation, though sadly there's no window. At the risk of repeating myself, in the lounge here, it doesn't feel small, and it doesn't feel like an entry-level caravan. Nor does it feel dark. There's no panoramic sunroof, but there is a large roof light overhead, and these pale coloured fabrics really help to lift the mood in here. It's a really spacious lounge. There's room for six people, so if you're a real social couple, then this is a great place to enjoy yourselves. There's a neat front chest here, although sadly, unless I'm mistaken, I can't find any TV point up here, so you'll have to use the sideboard above the fridge there to put your TV on which could restrict its use as additional work top. At night, you've got a couple of options. You can either use these long, long sofas as single beds. They're roughly six foot long, so there should be room enough for most. Or you pull out the slats from the offside bed base, and it makes up a colossal double bed. Underneath those bases, there's a good amount of storage space, particularly here on the near side. On the offside, it is restricted by the electronic consumer unit and the true mojita. Step outside again and you are reminded what a tiny little caravan this is, which is great news for storing it and great news for towing it. Yet of course inside you've got that wonderful social lounge, something you don't get in most fixed bed vans which tend to have a very compromised lounge area. If you really don't need any more than two berths, it's a very practical layout. And although it might not be the cheapest van with two berths, you really can feel where that money's been spent inside. Naturally self-contained by its idyllic topography, this gem of a site in Somerset could be the perfect place to take a break and get away from it all. 38 all-weather touring pitches are set in beautifully landscaped grounds, with trees and shrubs providing a good level of privacy. All pitches are within a short distance of the sparkling river Tone, where you can fish. We're Water Road Touring Park, based in Somerset, near the Devonshire border. We're a caravan park, adults only, with motorhomes, caravans, tents. We have 38 pitches, hard standing pitches, and two super pitches. The super pitches being extra large using the grass as well. We have three tent pitches, and we also have 26 fully serviced pitches, that's water and grey waste. Site facilities are headquartered in a barn to the south of the site, where you'll find an info centre, toilets, showers, disabled wet room, laundry room, payphone, freezer, microwave, coffee machine and computer. But it's not just the quality of the facilities and the location near Exmoor that make Waterrow such a good site. It's the warm welcome visitors receive from owners Lynette and Jamie Cook and the small touches, such as the regular painting courses available, that really impress a lot. We're a five-star graded park. All of our facilities are in our barn, which is quite a unique, very warm, cosy, all undercover. The park's on eight acres of land, some of which is woodland, which is our woodland. So we have areas for dogs to walk. There's plenty of wildlife here. We have a David Bellamy Gold Award. Also in close proximity, we have three national trust parks, Dunster Castle, Killerton, and Knight's Hayes. There are two cider manufacturers nearby. There's farm shops, and then you could also go shopping in Exeter. This is the first time on uh, Water Row. We've never been here before. Uh, most enjoyable site. Facilities are absolutely wonderful. Showers, toilets, warm, friendly staff, friendly people. Introduced ourselves to where we've got to go. Uh, we find ourselves very welcome here, and definitely, certainly, come again. 
Should I offer you any top tips for your stay here at Waterrow? First of all, I recommend you bring your walking boots because the walks can be quite muddy. Secondly, if you fancy your chances as a photographer, bring your camera and try and capture some of our lovely wildlife. And finally, the local eateries are very, very good. The Rock Inn is in walking distance. If you're already familiar with the Andrea Estella, it may not look as if a huge amount has changed for 2016, but in actual fact, an awful lot's going on underneath the skin. Weights are down by an enormous 175 kilos, although it's still a pretty hefty machine at 18, 25 kilos if you've got it fully laden. It's also, more crucially, now a four berth rather than a two berth. But you still get the same fantastic looks with those silver sidewalls, the rather natty roof rails, alloy wheels and bags of kit, heavy duty steadies and an Alco ATC trailer control system. I also like the fact that it's got plenty of good external lockers with neat little tags that hold them open when you lift them up. There's one here to get under the bed box, a large one at the front and round the side a neat little vertical locker that makes use of a gap in the kitchen space. But what's most interesting about this van is how it feels when you get aboard. So let's do that right now. Now I always like to start in the lounge, which usually means I'm sitting in the front of the caravan. But in this case, I'm sitting in the middle in this wonderful lounge with an armchair here on the near side, which is the perfect place to sit back and enjoy a book. And then a communal lounge area on the other side with a big solid table and this rather natty leather upholstery, which is the only option fitted to this particular example. I love the detailing in here. This little lamp that swings out from the sidewall to give the perfect nighttime illumination for an intimate meal or even a board game. It's just a really lovely space to be in. There is one slight drawback, however. Now, at the beginning, I mentioned the fact that this is now a four berth van. Well, those second two berths are made up from the lounge sofas. And it has to be said, it doesn't make the biggest or indeed the most comfortable bed I've ever slept in. You also have to find somewhere to store this rather hefty table at night. But as long as your touring is a twosome, it really is a spectacularly luxurious space. And there's masses of storage in here. Huge overhead lockers and bags of space in the bed boxes, despite one of them being taken up by a 40 litre onboard water tank. And here beside me, there's an enormous wardrobe. A welcome to my boudoir. Now there's two layouts available for the Estella. The Rio Grande, which has a near side fixed double, and this, the Amazon, which has got these two simply massive single beds. They really are huge, really comfortable and generous in both length and width, which is very unusual and is made possible by the fact that this van is pretty enormous. It's well over eight metres long if you include the hitch and a whopping 2.48 metres wide. This is not a caravan for amateurs to tow with. And let's face it, you're gonna need a pretty massive tow vehicle anyway. But there's loads of space in here, storage underneath each bunk, more storage overhead. It really does feel like a hotel bedroom rather than a caravan. And as for the ensuite, well, that really is luxury. There's a TV facing you, and each bed has its own lovely little lamp, although it does lack a shelf, so there's nowhere to put your cup of tea or book. Taking up the whole back of the van, it has a shower on one side, which although it doesn't have a one-piece liner, has some delightful mood lighting and a neat fixed towel rail. There's a bowl sink with a mirror behind and plenty of storage options, while the loo even has a little fixed toilet brush in a chromed holder. And if you like your privacy, you'll appreciate the fact that there's a proper frosted window. And for me, this kitchen really is saving the best to last. I mean, look how bright it is. This colossal skylight brings plenty of light into here. Often the cook in the caravan can feel like a bit of an afterthought, but here you're made to feel really special by your kitchen's position right at the front of the van. There's some great detailing as well. Check out this cupboard, which at the moment is shelved, but you lift up the shelf, prop it out of the way, and it makes an additional wardrobe. There's also these fantastic drawers. They're simply enormous, with built-in dividers for all your cutlery. I really love that. And also, nice soft close action. Over here we've got grocery baskets. And remember I told you about that neat external locker? Well, that is beneath this huge area of worktop, making use of a space that you can't access from inside the van. There's loads of room to store stuff here, 
and also do a bit of food preparation. Adria, as ever, has fitted this rather neat one-piece sink and hob unit. There's only three rings, but they're well spaced, so you can actually get three pans on them. And of course, if you make any spills, they run down and land straight in the sink and can be washed away. I really like that, it's a great touch. There's a separate oven and grill mounted here above the fridge, but as my wife pointed out, it's fine for me, it's not so great for her. At five foot, she can't even reach the grill pan, so it really is a little bit out of reach for some. But overall, what a great space. There's even somewhere to put your wine bottles just here. One last thing. Shouldn't every caravan have a built-in step? It just seems so logical. Now the Estella does remain a pretty niche product in the UK, and that's largely because its layout is fairly unusual in the UK market, a market more familiar with front lounges and central kitchens. That said, the fixed twin beds feel just like any other British van with that layout. And it's worth bearing in mind price. Now I mentioned earlier on that this wasn't a caravan for beginners, and that's true because it's very heavy, but it's also pretty expensive at a shade over £24,000 or a little over 25 with that optional leather. Now that seems a lot of cash, but if you bear in mind that the kind of rivals it's up against cost nearly 30,000 or even more, it looks like phenomenal value for money. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for this week, but please join us next time when you can take a look at a family-friendly Luna and a big twin axle Bailey. And of course, you can keep up with us via Facebook or on our website in the meantime, and in just a few minutes, you can catch up with all the motorhome news from Niall Hampton and Practical Motorhome TV. Until next time, though, from me, it's goodbye. Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Caravan TV.